Now, if you've left your Troy Belt pony sitting for a while and it's running rough or it doesn't run at all and you suspect carburetor problems, then this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to take this carburetor apart and clean it up like brand new so you can stick along for the ride and see how it's done. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing I did was take the hood off. Very easy job. Just disconnect the headlights and there you have it. Let's go ahead and get this air cleaner cover off of here. Pull out the air filter. Now we need to get the top of the shroud off right here to get to the carburetor. And we've got four bolts. So we've got one, two, three, four. These back ones here, you'll probably have to use a wrench to get these off. Carefully get that out of there. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Now let's go ahead and get these front ones off real quick. Now with these, you can use a socket or an impact or anything you want. These are easy to get to. Especially with the hood missing. And let's not forget about this little bolt right here. It's got a quarter inch head on it. And one last thing you got to do to get this shroud off of here is pull this little thing out right here. Just got to get behind it with some pliers and squeeze it and push it just like that right there. See this metal right here that it sticks down under that and it blocks it. All right, so just pull this off of here. All right, so this mower hasn't really been sitting all that long. I don't suspect that the carburetor is all gelled up like you might see right here. I suspect there's some kind of a piece of trash in the carburetor maybe. With any kind of fuel contamination, you do want to check the gas tank. If there's any question about the gas, you'll want to drain the gas out, flush the gas tank out with a water hose, and make sure your fuel lines are clear of anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and change the fuel filter, so I'm going to pinch this off right here. Now, some people like to put little pieces of fuel line on top of their vice grips. That's fine. I've done it this way for 20 years and never had a single problem damaging a fuel line, so just pinch it off and don't worry about it. All right, next you'll just need to undo these clamps right here to get the fuel line off. Now, sometimes you'll have to give the fuel line a little wiggle. This one seems to be okay. Just like so. And I'm going to set that out of the way so it's not uh, leaking all the fuel out of the fuel filter. And let's pull the breather off. You can usually just take a screwdriver and push that off very easily. And let's get the wire off the fuel solenoid. Usually you can just grab that and pull it right off. All right, next we just need to take these two bolts out. These fit a 7 16 socket. And now we just need to get these studs off. They fit a 7 16 You can probably use a deep well socket on this. It'd be faster. And you might have to twist and turn the carburetor a little bit to get the linkages loose. I think it's easier to take out the choke first. And then you can manipulate the carburetor a little better to get the throttle out. And that's it. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. All right, so I got this carburetor off of here, but I wanted to show you a couple of things before I take it apart. Now, if your mower happens to be surging, you might want to take a look at where this brass screw is at. Your mower may have an adjustable screw right here that you can adjust back and forth, and if you do, Try that and see if it doesn't clear up that surging. Also, some models have a valve right here, like a needle valve. Kind of similar looking to this, but it's not. It's coming out of here at an angle. And if you do take that one out uh, to clean your carburetor, I believe the adjustment is, is you screw it all the way back in until it stops, and then you back it out like a turn and a half. So I just wanted to point out those couple of things. All right, so let's go ahead and take this apart. Let's get the fuel solenoid off. Now in this one, a 12 millimeter happens to fit this the best. And I've already gone and pre-drained the bowl and got all the gas out of it, but you might want to be prepared for that with a towel or whatever because 
Yours is probably going to have some gas in it if there was gas in the mower. One of the first things you'll want to check is your fuel solenoid. If your mower has been sitting for a while, then give this plunger a check and make sure it's moving up and down very freely like that. Make sure it's not all rusty around the top or whatever. You can also plug this into its plug and turn the ignition switch on and off and you can watch that go back and forth. And as you can see, the bottom of the bowl is pristine. This one doesn't have any problems, but if it did, you can take steel wool and clean this out. Here, let me show you. I like to take a little bit of brake clean and kind of give it a spray. And then you can lightly go in here and clean that out. And that will remove a lot of the garbage that's in there. Now, if it's really bad, you'll have to you know, use a little more effort than that. Or you can use a Dremel tool with a wire wheel and go in there and clean that uh, stuff out of there. Because if you don't clean all that stuff out of there, it'll flake up and it'll wind up getting back in your carburetor and clogging it all right back up again. All right, now clearly this bowl is in good shape. Now I've done the same thing with these things. If they get all yellow and they get crusty, you can spray a little bit of brake clean on there and then you can clean it. Once you get it in your hand, I'm just doing it here because the carburetor's holding it. And then you can clean this up with a piece of steel wool as well. And if it's really bad, also use the Dremel tool if you have one that's got the wire wheel on the end and that works pretty good too. Now usually these pins will push right out and you can usually just push that thing right out of there, but this one is not pushing out so easy, so you have to kind of tap it out. And there we go, we're past the float. Now as you can see, the needle here has a rubber tip on there. Now if that rubber tip goes bad, it's going to start leaking where it sits in this seat right there. And what will happen is, is the fuel will run right past that and it'll wind up getting into your oil. So that's something to watch for right there. If you've got fuel in the oil, it's most likely because of this guy right here. Now, if you look down in here, we have a flat headed screw and it's kind of deep down in there. So a lot of times I'll take a flat headed screwdriver and I will cut the sides off like I did to this one right here. That way it'll go down in there and reach. And here we have our jet, and our emulsion tube is still in there. You can kind of see it right there. Just kind of grab something and push, and then that will come right out. Now, if you can see this, there's some tiny little holes in here. Some emulsion tubes have several holes all the way up and down through here. This is where I suspect my problem may be. These holes need to be cleared out, and I'll show you how I do that here in just a second. Now you can take this plate off if you want to, but I don't think it's really necessary. I don't really see any holes there that are susceptible to clogging up. Now if your carburetor has been sitting for a while, I usually see them things get all crusty in this area right here at the bottom. It'll be yellow, it'll be crusty, all kinds of stuff. Just take a Brillo or steel wool or Dremel tool or whatever and get all that stuff off of there. Because, like I said, the more that stays on there, it'll flake off later and it'll clog everything back up again. And there's just one more part that I wanted to take out, just as the last part. Now this one does have some little baby holes in there, so this one is important, if yours has this, to take this out and make sure you clean it. Alright, so to clean up this carburetor, I have a set like this that comes with a bunch of various different size rods. And what I do is I'll find the one that fits. Now this emulsion tube only has one set of holes in it right here. So I will usually take my rod and go right through it. And that will clean out that hole real well. Now most emulsion tubes actually have more than one set of holes. They have holes all down the side this way and then they have more holes on the side this way. This one only has one set of holes so this one is unusual. So after I do that I will go ahead and spray a little cleaner in there.
and then blow that out with some compressed air. Now I will do that for any of my components that have these little tiny little holes in them. I will clean them out, right? And then I will go through any little hole I can find. And then same thing, I'll clean it out with cleaner and then I'll blow air through it. Now on the carburetor, you do have a couple of small holes, but not as small as those. So I will clean these out as well. I'll look underneath, see if there's anything there. There's not. They're kind of hard to see in there, but if you look on this side, there's some little tiny little holes that do need some attention too. I usually will blow some brake clean or carburetor cleaner through there, and then I'll follow that up with compressed air. You don't want to forget about these holes because these can cause problems too. All right, so I'm going to check all my holes around the carburetor. Make sure everything's clean and blowed out and cleared out or whatever. And I'm going to put this thing back together exactly the way I just showed you. And we're going to put it all back together and see if it runs. All right, so I just wanted to show this part right here with the linkage in case you get there and you're like, well, where did that go? Very simple. Just put the throttle on right there. It goes on the control closest to the engine and then the spring goes right next to it. Just like so. And then the choke goes just like this right there and then it goes in behind here and th right through that groove right there just like that It runs like a champ. Hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching.